By side for the lead. Suarez on the inside. Hamlin on the outside. Haley on that outside line. Top of three. He's got some help with him. Oh, oh, oh into the wall they go. The 11 now also caught up in it. The whole Haley. The three of Austin Dillon squeezes through. He is in front. And look at virtually the only car to clear it. Keep coming, keep coming. The camera's pretty clear. Let's watch this right here. The 17 of Busher trying to go into the middle there on the 31, on the 16. No, the, the 99 just loses it. Denny Rex. Well, the 31 just lost it too by himself yeah. in that top lane. I wonder if it was yes. Reed. Well, yeah, I mean, both leaders are in clean air and they yeah. both catch their car. That yeah. tells me that there's something down there that's reducing grip. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, guys, there were a lot of drivers saying, hey, it's raining. Why are we racing right now? And that could have been the result of what happened there. Watch this 31, right? Watch him. He's is, is a clear indicator. Inside lane, very top. All right, as they roll through here, See right there, he's sideways. Yeah. The 11 sideways. The track three. is wet. Parker. And Jeff, exactly. His spotter was telling him it's raining, and then after that all went down, Justin Haley came on the radio and said it was raining. So, of course, there was no grip down there. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Ford. We go further so you can. And by Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. That smoke is from this fire. One fan that is here watching the race is going to have a very, very uncomfortable trip back into the parking lot. That is just behind the grandstands. Restart at Kentucky. They're in the garage. The fire is out, by the way, in the truck in the parking lot. Hey, Junior, it's an interesting situation for Brandon Jones. You've seen him lose two spots here in the last two laps. He says the window net is starting to come down inside the car. So occasionally he says he has to reach up, kind of hold it there. Look, his left hand is up there holding the window net while he's trying to drive. Jeff, I couldn't imagine, A, driving 300 laps at Bristol, but B, trying to do that, what Brandon Jones is doing right now. This is the worst racetrack to have to do something like that. The reason he's holding it up is that if it falls down, NASCAR is going to black flag him. So he's trying to make sure that does not happen. You can see it. It's not latched. So he's hoping for a caution. 51 to go to the end of this stage. He does not want to have to go that far doing this. Now, if NASCAR sees that happening. Well, I mean, they got to be seeing it now. We've got the camera on there. <laughs> oh, got a spin. Oh, the 48, Sanchez. Everybody trying to take Hold some evasive action here. He still can't get to pit road. Not gonna he's going to have to go around another, another lap. It's going to cost him a lot of time. And he missed that access. Whoa, he's in the wall. wall now. He missed the All access right. road. Got the right side, guys. Come to pit road here. Caution's out. Caution's out. And we'll bring out the caution. Okay, the two cars getting a series of penalties. And here, if you, uh, he, he, I guess he pitted too soon. Too fast entering pit road. Too, too fast on exit, and a commitment cone violation. The only thing he didn't do was run over the guy with the stop sign at the end of pit road. So he, was, he pretty well got them all, didn't he? <laughs> I guess if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, skirt the rules, you might as well skirt them all, huh? Get them all. <laughs> oh, well, Suarez, Briscoe Hooked got him into the back of Suarez, and he gets pounded. Dang it. Oh, yeah. Busher's upside over. down. I think he hooked a drain. The car, and that's what flipped the car. The upper A-frame was broke. The whole right front suspension dug in. That was Todd Gilliland tried to go high and there just didn't see. have enough room. See, that, that right front wheel dug underneath the car, and that's what dug in and caused it to start flipping. Violent. Violent crash. I'm, I'm sorry, they were talking to me in the truck because somebody threw something on the track right before the restart. Yeah. And I, I'm, I apologize for not listening because they, watch this now, folks. We did not see this originally. Our crew in the truck picked this up. That is someone's shoe. And then here comes Danica. And bam, mm. drop kicks it. And here is Danica's radio. That I hit. Okay. 
see that? Window gets open because she carried too much speed into the corner. She was able to hold on to the spot, though, and it looks like there's no serious damage. Something's wrong with my steering. Oh, someone hard in the wall on the front stretch. Up at Chad Jeff, yep, that tire finally blew. Yep. I'll say it did. Definitely would be putting four tires on that car. Okay, here's a wide shot. What's happening here? No, the there's green. Oh, green. Everybody, oh, oh look at all the. Oh, oh now the they're crash. running into each other. Jared is around. Stern Mar I think it was Sterling Marlin in the 14 car may have run into Jared, but everybody stopped because they saw the debris. Heavy damage to Sterling. Allen? Looks like just that. They were checked. The guys at the front of the pack started stepping on the brakes because of the metal debris in the middle of the track and not wanting to run over it. And by the time that chain reaction got five or six cars back, they were running into each other and spinning out. If you watch these guys start trying to dodge the debris, and Elliot Sander, the leader, says, Now, which way do I go to avoid all this debris? Because I don't want to stop. I don't want a flat tire. And Sterling just runs right in the back of Jarrett. Almost got Tony Stewart. Round, round. And listen. He just slowed down, and then he gets ramped. Watch your back, watch your back. God! Mm. Eric Jones, standout job down on uh, Pitt Road. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Are you kidding me? <laughs> God, Boyer. <laughs> well, they were Boyer. waving Boyer around because he's the, uh, the lucky dog, the free pass car. Yeah. And apparently nobody told the other drivers I, trying to clean I, off their tires. I, that's a spotter error. On choosing to pit, and there's the damage to Boyer's car from the wall. Mike. So we're hearing that the spotter didn't tell him that the 14 was coming around. But you give these crew chief a few minutes like that uh, while we sit down there and stop, they come up with some different uh, approaches and strategies. The battle is for second back through about ninth position and it is a melee wow. oh. spins right in front of him and everybody missed him watch Take this look. there we see corelli on the inside as santa mont comes down and into this look at that wow, wow. the jersey that barrier that and then the light pole he had to move a ton of concrete back there before the lights went out wallace has come on up through there but his car is getting very very loose houston is really working on him got trouble there Hey, we got the lights knocked out last night, and it looks like we got the lights knocked out again. The caution is out. Top of the screen, one car completely sideways. I believe that's Cindric. There's that one I almost saw go over the 16, I believe it was. It was the joy the that joy. I saw first yes. around backwards. See the white car on the bottom of the racetrack. That's Ty. Oh, he ran over something. What the heck? Yeah, he ran over something, and then I don't know if it knocked an oil line out of it, Steve? That's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like oil smoke because it's coming out of both front tires. And right there, the right front tire looks up. Oh, wow. this is Man. huge. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That angle of impact. Spring rubber flying out of the car. Let's go back and see if we can figure out what that was that he ran over. Did he but run over something or did something? Yeah, it was. Did it not, yeah, there was no, something see in the, the middle of the right. Right. right there? Boom, and then. I don't know if it knocked the oil line out of it or, you know, the oil filter that is mounted down there pretty low in front of the engine right there. The Ooh. whole car jumped up in the air when he ran over it, so it's something solid. I just don't know. What do you think that is, guys? I'm going Destroy battery, whatever it is. Yeah, I don't think it's a battery. <laughs> it is. It is. We don't know. It's a piece of debris, and it's going to have to be picked up. But it brought out the caution because of the 13 hitting it. Hey, I think we got cars out of fuel. The 48, the 48. car is on the back straightaway. Stopped. 47 car is on pit road. Marty. 48 is out of fuel. He said, I have no fuel pressure. And I was watching Chad Canals, and his eyes lit up. Also, A.J. Almanier going by me. He is out of fuel as well. He asked him to switch a flip inside the car. Jimmy said, I already did that under caution. So out of fuel here for the 48 is Jimmy Johnson, who had worked his way back in the top 10. Now you can see the car is refired. He's telling him to pit right now, and he missed pit road. So he's going to have to come back around once again and pit to be able to come in. Chad's not happy with NASCAR. That's what he was saying. He's like, 
pit road should be open by now. That's his issue with things. He thinks pit road should be open and the 48 should be able to pit with an open pit road. You see Jimmy trying to manage that fuel situation inside the car, shutting off the car when he can, trying to keep pace car speed as well. Yeah, we, we talked about it. The reason pit road's not open is because NASCAR wants to sort this scoring situation out before they open pit road. And I think we have another car out of gas of 13 of Casey Mears has slowed to a stop getting into turn one. Pit road is now open, so we'll see everyone dive, well, at least the ones that uh, have not come to pit road yet. We'll see them dive onto pit road now that pit road is open. Well, the funny thing is there's not that many anymore. We are pitting this time. We were listening into the 20 radio, Matt Kenseth. This is the discussion there I have. Everyone right now is a little bit confused as to where they are, either on the lead lap or maybe at the tail end of the lead lap. Listen. Um, can you explain how he could be the lucky dog if the 47 was the leader and I was right behind him? I cannot. No, I cannot. I think we're third. I really think we're third looking at it right now. That's my judgment. We're third. All right, so it's very complicated, but basically when the caution comes out, you have to be scored to either to start, finish, or to pit out. Well, where the 20 of Matt Kenseth, the 18 of Kyle Busch are pitting. It comes to pit out. There's Kyle Busch. He's cross pit out. Here comes A.J. Allmendinger. He beats Matt Kenseth to the pit out. Therefore, putting the 20 down a lap. That is how the 20 got down a lap. That's forcing him to take the wave around. It became more complicated when the 47 pitted when pit road was closed. That's going to be a penalty on the 47, but fortunately for the 20, he's going to take this wave around. The big winner in all this, in my mind, it's still the 48. He did a great job of not needing to pit when pit road was closed, didn't get the penalty, and because of that, he will line up outside second row. Remember, Kenseth was leading when he pitted, and the 11 and the 18 beat him off pit road. That's so right. a bad pit stop or something happened on pit road that was slow with Kenseth, and that allowed the 18 and the 11 to get in front of him.